I know you will spend a lot of time on a Turi character, but when you render it, the result is terrible. Wrong lighting, dead materials, rendering that no one pay attention to. Now imagine if you get the rendering right, your art becomes attractive, and you can present something professional from exactly the same model and texture. That means you are a winner and you are able to attract a lot of attention and be seen more. And being more visible in addition to helping you become more known can also make more clients and job offers for you. In this video, you will learn exactly how to achieve such a result. So, let's get started. I want to divide this workflow into 5 parts. Character pose, material setup, lighting, rendering, and finally compositing. Let's jump to the first one. Character pose is one of the most important factors in bringing a 3D model to life. Even if you have the best materials, lighting, and details, if your character stands like a lifeless mannequin, it won't convey any emotion. A good pose can tell a story, convey emotion, and engage the viewer. The difference between a dead character and dynamic character is like a difference between a random photo and a cinematic frame from a movie. If you want your rendering to be alive and impactful, take your character pose seriously. And there are a few ways to do this. You can either rig it in Maya or you can pose the character in ZBrush. The rig for this character is by my good friend Mr. Abbasi and I made this character for the Batman short film, be sure to check it out. And because his rig is perfect, I use it for the final pose. The second way is to send the final version of the low poly to ZBrush and use the T-Pose master tool to give the character the pose you want, which is definitely not as fast as rig and is a bit difficult. But I can say that I posed my last character in ZBrush which was a great result of a tutorial and in that course I explained Explained the entire process of how it works. And another thing you need to make sure of is what pose you want to give the character. I encourage you to use a specific reference so that you can check the final results. You know, just find your idea. And I use two different poses for the final rendering of this character so that it can create different scenarios. I had taken these maps for Unreal Export, but I can use them here too. The only difference with PBR maps is that ambient roughness and metallic are in one map and you have to change different channels for each. Channel R for ambient, G for roughness, and B for metallic. The result is almost the same as PBR export and I don't need to do export it again. And as you can see, this character has been UV'd using the UDIM. And in Marmoset 5, we have the ability to use UDIM option. Otherwise, we would have to go to Unreal and do the rendering or another software. Set the UV mode to UDIM and then import a map. The rest will be imported automatically with the numbering and naming they have. And overall, one of the good things about Marmoset is that it doesn't require a lot of settings for materials and everything is easy. Before we get into the lighting section, I should say that I create a large and complete course on character creation for AAA games about a month ago. I explained all the workflow you need to become a professional, and in addition, in the last chapter, I completely explained how to create a resume and apply for it. I also added personal growth, financial, and sales techniques that have helped me a lot in finding my clients over the years. Two teasers will introduce you the course in detail, and after this video, you can can check it out completely. And so far, over 300 people have registered for this course and the feedback has been fantastic. It's not every day that you get the chance. If I were to briefly explain lighting, it means creating a scenario with the specific lights that give the character a feel. And to create this scenario, you can use many references that are part of the cinematic shots, and then analyze the image and find the light sources. Now you can do it for your character too. You should note that not every scenario may match every character. And the first thing you should do is use HDRI for it. The reason for this is that it uses accurate reflections and shadows shadows on your model as a base. You can use the HDRI Heaven website which is everything for free. Now to make the result more attractive, you can also add lights from the side or behind the character. Reduce the HDRI amount so that you can add your own key lights. I always try to keep lighting simple. One main light, one fill light and one backlight. Or maybe two. 
that's the basic lighting and you can expand from that to more lights another thing is that it's up to you whether you want to use background or just a black image behind the character i'm going to use a garage background in this example because i feel like it matches well also add different hri to check out the effects i encourage you to use references so you know what you're going for for example i use a rainbow six reference for the second pose because i felt like my character would match that style well and i think i made something like that just a simple inspiration it's good to be creative but it's a little hard without inspiration and you want to make sure you're on the right way in my opinion the rendering process is not complicated at all and with a little experience you can figure out how to do it the first thing you should pay attention to is the camera angle make sure to use references to become more familiar with cinematic angles a good angle and depth can give your character a different feel you can easily duplicate the first camera and add more angles to the final render but my advice is to do it carefully and you don't need to have 10 cameras just interesting and important shots this can also help your portfolio a lot i changed the camera settings a little so that everything is a little sharper and with more contrast you can also add cinematic effects which i suggest not to overdo try to follow the style you have in mind so that you have a specific goal i will keep the render setting simple and set the quality to 4k because i usually crop the final frame a little in photoshop and I need a high quality so that when I zoom in, the image doesn't look bad. And that's it. Add your cameras and let the render run. I'm not really going to explain the basics in this video. There are a lot of tutorials out there. And my goal is to help you create amazing work with the tools you have. You can't find any video or photo on the internet that doesn't have the adjustment applied to it. I'm not talking about VFX and adding lights and smokes. Just adjusting the color and atmosphere can improve the quality of your image a lot. Import all your renders into Photoshop and click on the first image and go to the camera raw filter. Here you can see a lot of values. All of which change the color of the image. You don't need to watch a tutorial to work with this. You can easily test each option yourself to see what effect it has on the image. And what matters is what your goal is. I want everything to look a little sharper and cleaner. I also going to shift the color of the atmosphere a little toward green or blue you can go to give it a more cinematic effect. When you're working with colors, be careful not to oversaturate everything as it can take the result away from the original render. And now if you're happy with the first First shot, save the settings so that you can use the same settings for the next shots. Of course, provided that the camera and lighting are for the same scenario. You may need a different lighting setup like me for different scenarios. But in general, you should always adjust the values manually a little for each image. You can also add a smokes or particles to the scenes if you want. But I want everything to look natural and not too different from the original render. It depends on the scenario. And well, this is the workflow that I always use and you can even use Unreal or any other rendering engine. It's the goal that matters, not the tools. If you need full rendering tutorial for Marmosets, be sure to tell me in the comments. And even if you're interested in becoming a professional and learning character creation from 0 to 100, these two teasers are for you. See you on the top, mate.